when our fellows wanted to know about pituitary apoplexy and why it presents with the bitemporal heminopsia, bitemporal heminopsia, and if it does produce efferent rather than afferent disease, why it likes to cause third nerve palsy instead of sixth or fourth. And to answer this question, you need to know a little bit about the anatomy of the cella, tersica, the pituitary gland, and the cavernous sinus. So inside the cella, tersica, and this means Turkish saddle, the pituitary gland lives, the stalk, and the chiasm. And what's interesting about the anatomy of the cella is there's a diaphragm of meninges that covers the cella. So that is called the diaphragma cella. And that diaphragma cella acts as a constricting band that keeps the stuff downstairs from going upstairs. However, if you have a pituitary adenoma, it'll grow and make an intracellular mass. But instead of just making a bigger mass, it's got to go through that hole first. And so when it goes through that hole, it makes a snowman. And the poor chiasm will be worn as the hat of the snowman. And that snowman is what produces the acute bitemporal heminopsia in pituitary apoplexy that goes straight up through the diaphragma cell. You also need to know that the cavernous sinus is on either side of the cella tersica, and the cranial nerves are numbered three, four, five subdivision one in the anterior portion of the cavernous sinus and five subdivision two in the posterior. But the sixth nerve, he lives in the substance of the cavernous sinus. And so tumor is lazy. Even though a pituitary tumor can go this direction laterally, it usually goes the path of least resistance, which is right up the, through the diaphragm cellae. And that means when he grows, he's more likely to hit third nerve the top of the cavernous sinus. However, if you have an internal carotid artery aneurysm or carotid cavernous fistula or a meningioma in the cavernous sinus, it's more likely to hit sixth because the path of least resistance is this direction in the substance of the cavernous sinus rather than trying to get into the relatively protected wall of the dura, which is lateral. So, pituitary apoplexy can produce with afferent, by temporal heminopsia, going straight up, the snowman's head hit the chiasm and wears it as a hat, or it goes laterally into the cavernous sinus, or it goes laterally and superiorly into the cavernous sinus and hits the cranial nerve three. So it could be a third or a sixth, but you need to know these two, by temporal heminopsia and third for apoplexy.